There are few things in this world that compare to smoked meat over fire. And today we're gonna see what happens when we incorporate three versions of smoke to ribeyes before the dry aging process. With roast number one, we have real hardwood smoke. With roast number two, we have this stuff here, which is powdered smoke. And lastly, over here, we have liquid smoke. After 70 days of dry aging, will we be able to taste the smoke flavor? And is it worth it? Let's find out. Okay, let's start by talking about roast number one that we're gonna be smoking with real smoke. So this here is a beautiful prime grade ribeye. As you can see, just gorgeous marbling. And what we're gonna be doing is cold smoking it. Now, usually when we're smoking something in a smoker, we incorporate heat as well as smoke. However, in this case, all we want is the smoke and we want to keep that roast nice and cold. We still want to develop those smoky flavors, but since we're going to be dry aging it, we don't want to cook it whatsoever to prevent any bacterial issues. So this here is my version of a cold smoking chamber. Not necessarily the most efficient way to do it, but the key is that notice how the heat source is very far away from the meat. So even though we're adding smoke, we're not gonna heat up that roast whatsoever. So I'm just filling up the hopper here with some applewood sawdust, which is gonna generate that smoke for us. And I know some of you out there might already know how to use this thing, but we're just gonna light it up, turn on the fan, and just allow that smoke to fill up the box. This is probably as low and slow as something can be smoked. And I kept the chamber completely sealed. Right now that smoke is sticking to the meat. We're gonna let it sit there for probably 10 minutes and then repeat the process. Okay, so most of the smoke is gone and it's still very cold to the touch. So I think we're good from a bacterial standpoint. Let's do it again. So I ended up doing this multiple times, alternating from the box to the fridge, just to make sure it stayed cold. And it spent a total of a little over an hour in the smoke. Okay, next up we have our smoke powder. This here is a choice grade ribeye this time, but as you can see, still very nice marbling. Let's check this stuff out. So you might be wondering what this stuff is, and to be honest, I'm not really sure. The ingredients are maltodextrin and natural smoke flavor. My assumption is it's like liquid smoke that's been dehydrated, but I'm gonna give it a quick taste. Whoa, that is insanely intense. It tastes just like smoke, not necessarily in a good way, but it should definitely do the job. Now, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how much to use here, but this is an experiment, so I figure more is better than less. All right, this stuff is just so weird. The second it touched that meat, it sort of like turned into this sticky, almost like taffy. As I mentioned, the smell is just so intense. We've inhaled quite a bit of this stuff. Can't wait to see what happens when we dry age this thing. Let's move on to the liquid smoke. And last but not least, we have our final roast and we'll be using the liquid smoke. So this here is our applewood liquid smoke. You can sort of think of it as like smoked water, extremely concentrated, probably a little less concentrated than the powder, but I'm gonna give it a little shot. Okay, maybe it is as concentrated. A little definitely goes a long way. So we're gonna pour this entire bottle on the roast. They recommend one teaspoon of liquid smoke per five pounds of meat. So needless to say, the amount I use should be more than enough. And I made sure to coat all sides as much as possible. All right, our roast is completely covered in that liquid smoke. Decided to make a game time decision to add some coffee. The sound of a smoked coffee dry age just sounds Amazing, so we're gonna try it. And I just blended it finely, then covered the roast. The liquid smoke acted as a nice binder and it stuck on there pretty good. All that was left to do was place all three roasts in the dry ager for 70 days. All right, so 70 days later, and this is what we got. I mean, just check these things out. They have shrunk in size considerably. This is why I always recommend dry aging bone in roasts, especially over long time periods. It really reduces the loss. So this is what we're dealing with. Specifically, this middle one here, the smoke powder. I mean, it is just tiny at this point. It almost seems like that smoke powder has like eaten away at it or like pulled even more moisture out. But either way, let's like into them. Starting with the cold smoked steak. The first thing I noticed was a significant amount of oxidation and gray coloration. This is due to the extremely long length of time it was dry aged. However, it smelled great and it's purely a cosmetic issue. Like all dry aging experiments, I removed the outer layer, which is known as the pellicle, then moved on to the smoke powder dry aged roast. 
Now this one visually was the craziest. It had a tacky exterior and slicing into it, I was hit with a strong smoky aroma. The steak shrunk in size considerably and I once again removed that outer pellicle. Not the biggest steak in the world, that is for sure, but can definitely smell that smoke flavor on this. Lastly, the coffee liquid smoke dry age. This one had the most considerable oxidation, but the smell was unreal. The smell of coffee combined with dry age is just the perfect match. I treated all of them the same way, seasoning with just salt and black pepper. And it was finally time to cook them up. When it came to cooking them, I kept it simple, searing each in a cast iron. I didn't use any butter or aromatics as I wanted the smoke and dry aged flavors to come through. Besides a change in flavor and increased tenderness, one significant advantage of dry aging is that with less moisture in the steak, they develop a far superior crust in about half the time as a normal steak. Slicing into them, despite the grayness that came from the oxidation, they were all looking great and it was finally time to eat. All right, we have finally made it 70 long days, three extremely unique steaks. Let's give them a shot. Starting here with the liquid smoke coffee. Kind of looks overcooked, but I promise you it's not. I'm going for a bite. That is unlike any dry aged steak I've ever had. The dominant flavor is definitely that dry aged. 70 days is an extremely long time, so we kind of expect that. I do get a little bit of coffee, but I don't really taste the smoke. It's, it's subtle but for whatever reason, I'm tasting brag. Okay, moving on to number two. This is the one I'm most excited about. This is the powdered smoke. That steak looked ridiculous, ridiculous at, one, at point. one point. I'm going for a bite. The dominant flavor on this one is definitely smoke. I kind of feel like I'm at a campfire. I'd say we're at the upper range of like how smoky it should taste. Would I do this one again? Definitely with like half the amount of powdered smoke. Okay, and last but not least, we have our cold smoked steak, which is definitely cold by now. This one tastes a lot more like a traditional dry aged steak, but towards the edges, there is some additional complexity going on in terms of flavor. Honestly, I can't exactly pinpoint if it's from the smoke. It probably is. Would I do this again? Definitely, because I think there is potential. Instead of doing one hour with a smoke, I'd probably do like two to four, but I do think we're onto something with this. Next time we'll cold smoke it a little bit longer or maybe even buy one of those like actual cold smoking machines. I really hope you guys enjoyed this experiment. Let me know down in the comments what you wanna see me dry age next. It can be anything, it can be crazy, but let me know and I'll see you next time.